I calculate it simply on the 10% because easy math. A lot of people don't understand compounding, but do this. $100 becomes at the end of year one, 110, end of year two, 121, end of year three, 133 and a half. And that's the power of compounding. So in no time, when you have a way for your money to be safely, reasonably speaking, safely invested, and the returns are compounded when they're reinvested, let's say your IRA money is in the fund, and it compounds like this, you have the best thing in the world. Because how much you start with, how long you keep it, and what the interest that compounds is, is the three, three-legged three formula to become very wealthy over time. So a lot of wealthy families set up a living trust. They buy life insurance for everybody, for the family. So God forbid somebody's gonna die, we're all gonna die someday. There is life insurance money that goes into the living trust that makes the family wealthier. And the money gets invested in these passive income vehicles that keep compounding. All of a sudden the family starts poor or very little. And then with time it compounds. So you try to do the best for your kids. I mean, that, that's what I believe. I mean, at one point I was thinking about the commercial buildings I have in Puerto Rico, that historic buildings. I bought historic buildings because there were some tax advantages and they're historical. Meaning the older they get, the more valuable they become. And it's right next to the cruise business that arrives. I buy in San Francisco because it's so crazy expensive. No matter what's happening in that market, there is demand for high end. So I buy and sell. But the ones I keep were the Puerto Rico properties because of the actual cruise business and it continues. So I say to myself, I said once to myself, I'm not owning these buildings. I'm just holding them for my kids. And if you do well for your kids, you're going to do well for yourself because as you get older, it just gets compounding. And then you create a legacy because if you're in the living trust and everything is in there with life insurance and all that good stuff, when you die, it's not such a negative impactful event. When you die, more money comes in and you already earmarked for how it's going to be invested. And the living trust clearly says that the money and the cash flow will go to your kids and then your grandkids, never to the spouses, because you don't know who they're going to marry, right? Love could be blind. And no matter how much you teach your kids on what to love and how to have positive relationships, sometimes people flip out. I don't know. But so you keep it for your kids, your grandkids and generations after you, you control the money after you're long dead and gone. The compounding effect of money is something very powerful, but it's also for relationships. As you build rapport with somebody and you nurture the relationship, life is too short to go fight with a family member or somebody you love or a friend. Try to be positive about it. And if you get frustrated, try to bring the playfulness and the creativeness in life. Know this. The reason I say be playful, life is a game, is when you are playing, you have a certain distance. You understand that there will, you're going to lose a little, there will be some pressure, there will be some release, you're going to score one, they're going to score one, and it's part of the game. You don't want to constantly win. You want to let them win sometimes. It creates that excitement. It keeps you creative. It creates that relationship of humor and fun, and that's very important to create a compounding effect with those you know as well. That's how you create powerful allies, and the most powerful ally could be your spouse and your kids. And if you don't have a spouse and a kids, fine. It would be your family members, the people you love, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, etc. And if you have no one, I'll be your friend.